come to mention that our sponsor for today is Mananoc Radio Group, and our host is obviously Bentley Connors. Thank you to Patrick, wherever he is. He'll be available later after this session if you'd like to tour the facilities and see what some of the rooms look like and everything. I also want to thank Bill Reeves at Eastern Video Productions. He's here today. He'll be recording this session, and hopefully it'll get a time slot on Cheshire TV, Channel 8, here in Keene. Um, and today's topic, as I'm sure you're all well aware of, is uh, Healthy Eating, Active Living. Through, it's an initiative um, with the Vision 2020 from Cheshire Medical Center, Dartmouth Hitchcock Keene. Um, and we have two speakers joining us today. One is Jennifer Begley, she's right over here to my left. And Jennifer is the Worksite Wellness Program Manager with Cheshire Medical. Uh, she is in the field of health and wellness for over 10 years. She holds a master's degree in organizational leadership and management from Antioch and a bachelor's degree in health education and promotion from Plymouth State University. Joining her is Patrick Michelson, also to my left. She, he is the Cheshire County uh, HEAL program coordinator and he brings a wide background to the Keene area having worked in criminal justice, wow. <laughs> real estate investment, and he was also a chef, a restaurant owner. In addition, his position with HEAL, um, Patrick is also the special events coordinator for the hospital and he lives in Keene with his family and very active with his local Freemasons. So please help me to welcome them. I just want to get a um, kind of a sense of where everybody's at in terms of Vision 2020. Is is that something familiar to you? Have you heard of Vision 2020 before? Raise your hand. How many of you would say you're versed or familiar with it, like you could explain it to somebody else? Okay, a few people. So what I'm hoping today is that you can get a little bit of a sense of what Vision 2020 is because um, it's huge. It's a really big initiative that our community has taken on. So I want to give a little bit of background so that when you start to hear things about Vision 2020, you can start to say, oh, I know what that is, and I could actually spend 30 seconds, 30 seconds explaining it. So the goal of Vision 2020 is to become the healthiest community in the nation by the year 2020. Now, that's only 10 years away. And we've been working for a couple of years now on getting this initiative off the ground. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what we've been doing so far, but also give you an idea of what Vision 2020 really means to us as individuals, but also as employers, as schools, as churches, as a community overall. So when we talk about health, it's not just the absence of disease. Wellness is huge. There's all kinds of dimensions, there's so many levels to it. So when we talk about Vision 2020, it isn't just about managing chronic disease or eliminating disease, it's about mental health, it's about spiritual health, it's about social health. So I'm gonna show you the five goals of Vision 2020 so that you can start to see how it's, it's so big and it's, it's got some umbrella um, pieces to it. So and what I like about the second quote here is it's a shared responsibility. In terms of our community and becoming the healthiest community in the nation, it is a shared responsibility, not only as a community, but as um, a personal asset. So when we talk about it, and I'll show you when we go over the goals, this is really a huge culture change for us, to think about health as an asset, as a priority. There are a lot of us that have been doing that personally for a really long time, but we're starting to see employers and churches and schools really embrace health and well-being, and that's fairly new. Um, within the last couple of years, people have really taken an active role in looking at their population and wanting it to be healthy. So we're going to go through this huge culture change over the next 10 years, but I think it will continue even after that. So there are five goals of Vision 2020, five indicators. Um, and I feel that these five indicators really kind of encompass that overall well-being. So let me kind of break each one down for you. The first one is health status. And health status is talking about um, the number of healthy, adult, healthy weight adults that we have in our community. It's improving specific measures in terms of health status. So when we put that into more layman terms, it's about knowing your numbers. Because our numbers have such an effect on our own health and well-being. And our numbers are not just cholesterol or our weight. It's the number of days that we feel happy. It's the number of day nights we get good sleep. It's the number of... Um, you know, folks in our community that feel like their asthma is under control. It's, health status is big, but it's so important if we're going to become personally responsible for our own health and well-being is knowing what our status is and how to improve it. 
But one way to do that is the second goal, which is health literacy. It's understanding those numbers. You know, we, between the media, the newspaper, the internet, your family, we get a lot of health information and how to, how to look at it and go through it and make sure it makes sense to you it can be really difficult sometimes. Um, and then you've got your providers, your healthcare providers, you've got all of this information. So we want to create a health literate community where we truly understand what, our, what it means to be healthy for ourselves. But not for ourselves, but for our community, for our population overall. So really, when we put it into perspective, health literacy is understanding your numbers. So if someone gives me information about my health, I know where to go if I don't understand so that I'm completely aware of what it means to me. So like, there's a program called Ask Me Three. And Ask Me Three, and I brought the, um, the questions. Ask Me Three is something that when you go to a health care provider, mental health care provider, whoever it may be, it would be really important to leave that visit with these three questions answered. So, what, uh, let me remember, what is my main problem? What, what do I need to do about it and why is it important to me? And I feel that if people really left a, uh, an appointment or a meeting with someone with those questions answered, they'd be that much um, ahead in terms of understanding their own health and well-being. The third is um, healthcare access, which is maximizing the amount of um, access that we have to healthcare. Huge challenge within our country in terms of healthcare. But we really want to see that improve. We want to see the number of folks that are underinsured or have no insurance and all increase so that everybody has that access. We want to see, you know, the number of healthy births happen within our community. There's a lot of things that we want to see happen in terms of healthcare access. But when we talk about numbers, when we go back to health status, it's about managing those. So if you're, you have chronic pain or chronic diabetes or a chronic condition, we want you to have access so that you can manage those things correctly. The fourth part of Vision 2020 is wellness opportunities. And this is kind of the, the most exciting one, I think, out of the five, which is being able to move your numbers. And as a community, it's about creating an infrastructure and a built environment that breeds healthy behaviors. So it's the number of walkable, bikeable paths within our community. It's the number of community events that are happening. This is where I see the huge culture changing. You know, one of the examples I always think about is if you see someone that's biking and they're in plain clothes, what are some of the first things people think when they see someone riding a bike in plain clothes? What was that? <laughs> their car broke down. Yeah, what happened to their car? Why don't they have transportation? Versus, look at them, they're riding to work or they're going to the store. You know, that's where that culture change of perception is going to happen over time. It's building an environment that breeds those healthy behaviors. And then in our region, we are known for our, you know, wonderful community spirit and our ability to work together. So the fifth um, goal of Vision 2020 is about knowing your neighbors. We can't do this individually, we have to do it together. So social capital is about knowing your neighbors. It's about doing something healthy with somebody else. The other example I have for this one is, wouldn't it be great when coworkers say, hey, let's all get together after work. Rather than going out for an adult beverage, everybody goes for a walk. You know, those are the things that are going to create the healthiest community. I know it's not always. <laughs> I can see you and Susan laughing over there like, well, that's no, not then you go for an adult beverage. Then after, go for you after. So what we've been doing so far up until this point has really been engaging the community, and I know there's quite a few folks in this room that have been part of the planning process of Vision 2020. But what we've done over the last year is we com um, convened five work groups, and each work group was in charge of one of those five goals. They brainstormed, they talked about it, they explored different ideas of what we can do in our community. They looked to other communities to see what they were doing. What came from that is what's called our community action plan. And there's a couple of copies over on the table. Um, they're just, right now, they're, um, we have so few of them that we're not able to pass them all out. But this community action plan says, okay, now we've put together these goals. How are we gonna do it? How are we gonna measure it? What do we already know about our community? So these five work groups help put this piece together. And this is the first step in making something happen. Because everyone keeps saying, well, what do we do? What, what, what's going to happen next? 
Um, we also are starting to look at grant funding and programs, and Patrick this morning is going to talk about the HEAL program, which is about he healthy eating and active living, a very basic message that is the, you know, the impetus of Vision 2020. So when the work groups met, and what we found over the last year as they were working is that we're already doing this. We do a great job in our community. We're not starting from ground zero. We're actually starting with kind of a leg up. We are already a great community that has a lot of activity, a lot of engagement. So we're already in a really good place to become the healthiest community. Um, but we need to engage. We all are part of this. This is not a hospital program. This is a community vision to become the healthiest community. And we all have a piece of it. So the really the next step, now that the work groups have said, okay, here's what we're going to look at, here's what we're going to measure, it's time to say, what, how do you want to be involved? Because we can all be involved either on a personal level, from where we work, from where we spend our time. It's, it can be something that everyone's a part of. So we're, we're looking for engagement in terms of how do we change that culture? Because everyone has great ideas about how that will happen. So in terms of engagement, we wanted to let you know about an event that's going to happen in the spring. And we're calling it the Vision 2020 Summit. So it's going to be a one-day meeting. We're going to have some speakers. We're going to have some breakout sessions. It's a great way to say, OK, now I'm ready to put my name on a list to be part of Vision 2020. So you'll get to see a little bit more in detail what those work groups have been working on and also start to look at, okay, now that we know what we need to do, how are we going to get that done? Who is going to be the players involved? How are we going to make these things happen? And it's also going to create awareness because a lot of you have seen information about Vision 2020, but it's a constant um, battle to continue to talk about this. So it's a way to create conversation for those that think, well, I'm not in the health field, so I don't really have a role in Vision 2020. You do. Every single person does. So the summit would be a great way to start those conversations, see who wants to be involved. And to start recruiting that participation, we're going to have what's called Vision 2020 Ambassadors. And it can be someone that finds two people a week and walks with them. It can be really simple. It can be whatever you think. Because again, health and well-being is this big. So if everyone had a piece in that, we would, we would get to where we want to be in the next 10 years, which isn't very far away. So when we talk about specific interventions and specific programs, Patrick's going to come up and talk about healthy eating and active living and talk a little bit about the grant funding that we received for this um, HEAL initiative and how you, know, you can get involved and get an idea of how um, healthy eating and active living is becoming part of our community. Um, I'm available for questions afterwards. This community action plan that I refer to is actually on Cheshire Med's website. So if you go to their homepage on the left-hand side towards the bottom, you can download this in a PDF. And it's kind of interesting to look at, okay, what are we measuring? How are we going to get to where we want to be? And so if you start to look at this, you might think, well, I could help with that, or I'm interested in that. So this is a really helpful document to get a better sense of where we're going and how we're going to get there. Does anyone have any questions before I pass it over to Patrick? No? Okay. Well, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, I almost hate following Jennifer because she's kind of up and perky in the morning and <laughs> definitely gives a fun thing to do. Um, I am the project coordinator for the local Healthy Eating Active Living. Um, Healthy Eating and Active Living is a statewide initiative. It has just finished basically its first year of tuition into being out into the community. There's four grant sites that are around in New Hampshire. There is Upper Valley, uh, the Lakes Region, um, Cheshire, Cheshire County, of course, and there is also and there's also one in Fraconia as well. So it, it's a rather widespread group of people. Um, what we're going to talk about is what it takes to actually build a HEAL community. Um, it's a community where everybody kind of gets together and they all work on doing little small initiatives where it's not big, huge steps. I'm not looking to get people to all of a sudden start running marathons and doing great things. I'm a big believer in for all of us to do one small step will lead us towards making our making a marathon and running towards our course and goal. Um, what it takes to get that get us that way is going to be involvement from community partners. It's doing children, teenagers, adults, doctors, principals, 
wellness coordinators like Jennifer, mayors, town planners, business owners like yourselves, and the variety of the entire community. Okay. HEAL itself actually deals with five different components to make up its healthy eating active living program. Um, it will make help to make a HEAL community by addressing cities and towns by getting them to improve local pathways and doing like the projects like the Pathways for Keen, um, Walk New Hampshire events, making it so that roadways have bike paths in them so that people can get access to having health opportunities. Um, we're also looking at working with healthcare organizations to get them to improve their medical screening. Some of the programs that are out statewide are doing a lot with electronic records with getting pages in that are now asking providers to talk to people about their actual general wellness and asking them, what are you doing to be more physically active as opposed to, hey, your blood pressure is a little high. Now they're actually asking questions of going, your blood pressure is a little high. Have you thought about doing a few things in your life to change it other than just medication? The areas that Cheshire County Heal is going to be addressing specifically are three of the five points. Um, one of which is looking at schools with their after school and daycare programs. Um, what we're looking to do is get them to encourage more healthier snacks for them. Um, and by that we're having them do a lot more fresh fruits and vegetables. We're working with the Early Sprouts program to get them involved. We're also intricately involved in the Catch Kit Club program which is an evidence-based program that's been an initiative that goes around the entire nation and locally there are six catch kid clubs in our area that we are helping to give technical assistance to. We're training um, operatives to be in these after-school sites. Um, they actually Catch is a really great program because it encourages kids to compete and do physical activities in a non-competitive way. So they're doing all sorts of fun activities, they're getting out, they're being physical, they're being active. And a lot of times kids don't even realize that they're breaking a sweat and they're being physical because of the games that they're playing. And in addition to that, there's also a nutrition component to it where they're trying out some new vegetables, they're trying some healthy cooking techniques and things like that in these classes that they may not have an opportunity to do at home, but by doing it at the, at the Catch Kids Club, they're able to do, learn those skills and they take them home and they have their families do them. I mean, I've heard several um, parents tell me that their kids are in the program, their kid learned how to do fresh vegetable quesadillas and brought that recipe home and harangued the parent into going out and making the fresh vegetable quesadillas for them for a couple meals right after that. So it's an opportunity that spreads into everyone else. One of the other areas that Cheshire County Heal is looking at is work sites. Um, we, all, we all have heard all of our reports that health care is skyrocketing and that there's a lot of things that are now being looked at to help give work sites to reduce that cost for them to help them stay viable and keep themselves going. Um, what we'd like to do is encourage work sites to do more physical activities during their day. Encourage a walking club for people to do at lunchtime. Start a wellness program. Um, do things like offering something as simple as healthier snacks in your vending machines. Um, getting rid of the soda machine and putting in more fresh water dispensers throughout your work site. Um, one of the ways that we're actually reaching out to communities is through the Employee Health and Wellness Cooperative. Um, it's basically a group of local wellness coordinators and various businesses that are interested in promoting the idea of healthy living and active, active living and healthy eating in their work site. And what we're doing in that group is we're having a bunch of sessions where we're actually teaching work sites how to start wellness initiatives inside of their in, in actual group. Um, through that we're going to be do, dealing with nutrition planning, tobacco cessation, um, substance abuse issues, and also physical activity. Um, the next session for the Health and Wellness Cooperative is actually on March 25th. At, it's actually going to be held at Cheshire Medical Center and we're going to be dealing with the topic of starting wellness programs inside of everybody's individual organizations. Um, the last one that Cheshire County Heal is going to actually deal with is food outlets, which is an area for myself being a former chef is near and dear to me to get going. And what we're going to be doing is looking to get restaurants and food establishments to offer healthier items onto their menus. We're also getting them to 
and from convenience stores and stores to convey, display more healthier eating options in front of their stores. Um, a lot of times when you go into your convenience stores and your supermarkets, the thing that you see as you're checking out is the row upon row of sugary candies and high calorie foods that just really aren't the, uh, the message that we should be sending to our youth. A lot of stores have now started to take some of those things back and they're starting to put forth fresh fruit for children and doing even dried fruit and things like that. And the retailers are now finding that those options are actually selling better for them than their candy displays were and they're actually making more profit on them so they're enjoying doing them now. Um, one of the other options that we've done things that we've done to help people get, establish that point is we've established the Cheshire County Culinary Collective which is a local group of restaurant owners and other food service industry representatives that are looking to help preserve the unique food flavor of the Monadnock region. There's actually a big culinary group in this area that has made some really great health and wellness opportunities for people to eat at in our area. Um, just looking in the room, we have Phil from Community Kitchen in the back who has started a wonderful program with Community Kitchen where they're now offering healthy menu options for everyone there. They're doing whole grains, they're doing fresh and local produce and things like that. That I, after meeting with him, I've started to actually champion that as one of my true heroes of the HEAL program because a community kitchen can make opportunities like this happen. When we go to the Timoleons and the Athens Pizza, which are doing things for a profit and have a much, much larger budget, they should have no problem with being able to do some of these same initiatives as well. Um, one of the other things that's going to happen that you'll see coming along in the healthy eating option is we have started a program called the Turn a New Leaf, which will be a menu branding program, which you'll start to see in local restaurants fairly soon. It's going to be in, truly officially unveiled in another couple of weeks, where we're going to start going to local restaurants, looking to see what they already have on their menu that's nice, healthy options for you, and you'll see a readily identifiable symbol in that menu that's going to educate the consumers as they're sitting there as to what they're looking at. And it's going to be just a little red heart with a green elm leaf on it since we are the elm city and we want to continue that trend of planting more elm trees and making ourselves a nicer environment so people will be able to go forward with it. And what we're also going to get restaurants to do is just offer more fruits and vegetables throughout their menu selections. Also doing, limiting the promotion of doing the sugary carbonated beverages, offering more water choices, maybe possibly offering more milk, um, choosing lower fat cuts of meat and doing leaner milk products available for everybody and also offering more whole grains for everyone to prepare. As far as active living goes, we're working throughout the community with the before and after school programs, the work sites, even our food outlets to get them to do things to encourage people to be more active. I think we've all sat at a restaurant where we've been told that our wait time for a table is going to be 20 minutes. One of the things that I'm actually talking to some of the restaurant people to do is to instead of encouraging the people just to stand around in an overcrowded bar area where they're not getting the most optimal customer service, is to encourage that customer to go take a walk. It builds up their appetite for the meal that they're going to have, and it also gives them an opportunity to work up a little bit of physical opportunity for themselves to go towards their meal, and it builds a little bit of social capital because as you're walking along in that walk, you're exchanging things through the company that you're with, a lot of times it's families and there's multiple generational stories that occur. I know from my family, just going on walks with them, I've been able to find out lots of things about my grandfather that I never knew by just getting my mom to go out and take a walk and she'd see a tree and it would prompt her to tell a story about something that happened when she was a kid. And it's always kind of a fun way to have that happen. One of the other things that we're looking for people to do is also to limit their screen time that they do. Um, the average American spends about six hours in front of a screen. Um, the recommendation is that you spend no more than two hours a day in front of a screen, and that means your time in front of a computer, television, and everything else. And for most of us, I know that that's a very hard thing to do. Um, we're also looking to get our children to start doing, children and teens, to start being active for 60 minutes a day. And that doesn't, that doesn't have to happen all at one time. It can happen in 10 minute blocks even, but if we can just start getting our schools and 
even when you're at home with them, to just get up, start doing something a little bit more active, go outside, and just make, instead of taking the short path to everything, take a longer walk around, walk to school. Um, Cheshire County Heal itself has been actually funded through a couple different agencies. Um, the Healthy New Hampshire Foundation is our main funder, um, and it was also brought apart through the Council for a Healthier Community, and that group is made up of the City of Keene, SAU 19 and 38, the Keene Housing Authority, AFI, which is Advocates for Healthy Youth, Cheshire Medical Center, the Coalition for Tobacco, Free Communities, the Keene State, and numerous other ones. Um, and lastly, what I just want to close for everybody with is a quote from Terry Johnson, who's the director from HEAL, which says, HEAL brings healthy eating and active living resources to New Hampshire communities, schools, work sites, healthcare providers, individuals, and families. And really, what that truly means to all of us is HEAL really isn't looking to do any kind of major new initiatives. It's all things that we know we should do. We're just asking us all to actually start doing them and putting them in place in areas that you may not normally expect it. We don't always think of work sites as an opportunity for people to take a wellness opportunity, but the research is actually there that says if you as, as an employer start to do a work, a work site wellness program, your productivity will go up, your absentee rates will go down, your turnover will reduce, and that's a great opportunity for you. For food outlets, if they start offering healthier things on their menus, they'll find that their customers want to come into them more, which means their profitability will go up. They'll also expose themselves to um, different re resources for food and vendors and things like that. Where the uh, local war movement, which is doing connections between local farmers and restaurants, have brought together a lot of local people in our community who normally wouldn't have met with each other, but now they're starting to talk as through some of these initiatives. And our last one is the before and after school program, which has gotten a lot of people involved in taking care of what's going on with our future and our youth to um, address their needs so that our next generation of people that will be sitting here at the next, in 20 years for the next chamber breakfast will be a healthier community than we are now. And by them doing that, it's gonna lead us to have a stronger, healthier workforce for the Monadnock region. And that's it for actually for my presentation. If there's any questions, I'm willing to answer them. If anybody has any questions about Heal, Patrick, mm -hmm. Susan, uh, I know that uh, a few months ago you had a, a meeting of, of uh, business folks about the activities that they actually are beginning in their in their businesses, and most of them were big companies, CNS, Timken. Etc. Um, my concern is for the small companies, and you and I have talked about this a little bit, the, the small places that have anywhere from three to 20 employees. It's a big effort to assign somebody to this. It, can there, it, it, is there any process for uh, partnering with some of the big companies that already have programs that people could just sort of join into? And um, it's an easier way to get going. Yeah, and that's actually a part of the Employee Health and Wellness um, Collaborative, which it, I'm sorry, cooperative, which enables companies, no matter what your size is, um, through that group, we have some companies that have as few as three employees, as well as CNS coming to the table, which has several thousand employees. And through that group, they're networking with each other and sharing resources with one another and getting ideas in that regard. And that's one of the things that we're actually targeting and taking into, I guess, in concern for starting the health and wellness programs is the majority of businesses that are out in our community are actually qualify under the Small Business Administration guidelines as micro businesses where they have fewer than 50 employees. And we're looking at addressing them as those are the key people that really make up our community and we want these people to be able to get access to health care and have the same wellness opportunities. Although it may be hard for someone like Bergeron Construction to start its own health and wellness program because they don't have enough employees and they can't dedicate uh, their own health and wellness coordinator. By having access to the resources through this cooperative, they're able to start some programs with them. I 
and I actually use Bergeron as a true example because they, through this cooperative meeting, they're now working with a couple health and wellness coordinators and some local dietitians to develop a menu pro, uh, a program where they're going to talk about lunch menu ideas for their construction workers and also doing some physical activities for them so that they'll start to eat healthier meal options when they're because one of their concerns is that their staff is constantly out on the road and they typically eat a lot of fast food and they don't eat the right diet and it kind of affects their overall health. Now through this cooperative they're starting to meet with other people and they're starting initiatives within their company where they're going to start showing their employees better ways to have lunches and to also start to do some more physical activities so that it reduces some of their work-related injuries and things like that. Uh, what kind of uh, organized data gathering are you um, putting in place to evaluate the activities? We're, what we're actually doing is, we're, for each one of the three branches that we're looking at, we have three different data collection pieces that we're doing with it. Um, for the before and after school portion, we're using um, BMI data that's being collected on the kids that are in the, the CATCH program, and that's how we're affecting using that to uh, evaluate our effectiveness with it and that's something that the catch program has actually already done and we're just using their data to go with it. Um, as far as employee health and wellness, um, the, the companies that are going to participate in it, if they sign up for one of the organized wellness programs that are out there, a lot of them have an evaluation process that's built into them that for data collection and the reason I don't want to say that I'm doing one specific plan for that is depending on the company size, the health and wellness program that they sign up for is going to be a little bit different. Um, larger, a larger scale company might decide to want to use the CDC's Lean Works program, which is geared primarily for a company that has at least 500 employees. Whereas a smaller company like one of the Ed Jones franchises um, might only have five or six employees in it, and they might use something like the American Heart Association Start program. And they, each one of those has a component in it to do some data collection and evaluation for it. And as far as the restaurant portion goes, we're not really doing a true data collection. And what we're doing with that is more of a general education process. Yes. Is your initiative reaching out to uh, local organic food producers, uh, any CSAs? Or we, we have invited CSAs to take part in the Cheshire County Culinary Collective, um, which affectionately is 4C in our world. It's, it's a mouthful to say. But we've, we've got a few organic people that have come to the table with us as well. Um, we've actually, through the group, one of the initiatives that they're looking to bring back is in the Nadnock region. There used to be a version of the Iron Chef competition, and the Cheshire County Culinary Collective has been talking about maybe trying to bring that back, but what they would like to do is do a twist on it where the ingredients that are going to be used in the con competition are going to be mostly, or if not all, local, done organic, with local produce. If you're looking to do more of that, I can I might be able to help make some connections. That's what actually HEAL is really all about, is it's involved with everyone coming to the table and bringing forth something and sharing it with one another and passing that information on. Um, HEAL itself is a is actually a very small program that's doing a lot of big things and part of the way that they're doing it is by connecting with all of you and getting all of you to take that one small step so that we can complete the race to uh, going to vision 20, the year 2020 and completing our vision of becoming the healthiest community. Are there any more questions? So I'm curious, are you actively going out and meeting with people like this in that room and, and, and asking what they're doing and, and making suggestions or are you inviting them to cooperative meetings? Or how are you, aside from presentations like this where they're all here listening, do you actively solicit them or should they approach you if they're interested? Um, the short answer to all of that is yes. Um, <laughs> I, I spend a good deal of my day going out and meeting with other business people and restaurant owners and after school programs and actively soliciting them to take part in the HEAL process. I also invite them to take part in the Cheshire County Culinary Collective, the Employee Health and Wellness Group. Um, for the before and after school portion, I work with the Cheshire County After School Network, which is also known as CCAN, 
and I've started to get them to be able to involve other people in our community to come and sit down with them. So all of those things apply where we'd like to see people come to our collective and our cooperative meetings. I'd also like the opportunity to sit down with any of you at your workplace and talk about ways that we can introduce heal initiatives into your work sites as well. Any other questions? Okay, well I guess seeing none, I think that's going to let us wrap everything up for you guys. And I thank you all for the opportunity to come out and present our, our HEAL discussion for you. And I want to thank Bentley for offering a great healthy breakfast for everybody. And I'm glad to have met most of you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you.